Hi there, it's Dr. Galloway in Monterey, California, and today we're going to take a look at a very unusual case of someone who developed persistent pain after an anterior cervical discectomy infusion that we treated with an anterior cervical microforaminotomy with excellent results. This patient has undergone a previous anterior cervical discectomy infusion, which we can see here with the plate right here in the front of the cervical spine, and then the bone graft here which was used to fuse the C6-7 level. Now the neuroforamen seen on the sagittal view is this area right here. This happens to be above the area of the fusion and that's what a pretty normal looking um, neuroforamen looks like. And then here at the level of the fusion, we can see the neuroforamen and that looks pretty good right there. But if we delete this, <clears throat> And if we scroll down over here, we're going to look at uh, neuroforaminal anatomy a little bit more closely. So we're going to scroll up here, and what I've done here is I've outlined the, on the right-hand image, I've outlined the areas of the neuroforamen with these green uh, uh, lines here, indicating the area where the nerve root leaves the spinal canal and goes down into the arms. Now that's at the C5-6 level, which is not bothering this patient. He happens to have a C7 radiculopathy which is pain that starts in the neck and goes down the back of the arm and all the way to the hand. And as we scroll down here, we can see the plate and the screws. And then we come down to the level of the neuroforamen, and this is the neuroforamen on the right side at C67. Now here's the interesting part. If we click on this image here and scroll over to this image right here, we can see that there's an area right here where the neuroforamen is tight. There's still an area of residual disc disease right here, where there's a persistent disc osteophyte complex that's squeezing the nerve root going down to the arm. And so in this case, in spite of this person having an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, they were left with persistent neuroforaminal narrowing at the C6-7 level, causing a right-sided C7 radiculopathy. So what we did in this case is we made a surgical approach here and came down through the right side of the patient's spine and removed essentially this portion of the disc in the bone right here and drilled that out, getting access to the neuroforamen here and decompressing it directly. And what was very satisfying about this case is that immediately afterwards the patient woke up with complete resolution of their symptoms and <clears throat> their arm pain that they'd had for the last two years after their previous ACDF at C67 was now gone. So an interesting use of the cervical microforaminotomy technique here to treat persistent neuroforaminal stenosis after a previous anterior cervical discectomy infusion.